What do you do when you live in a van and there's a high winds and a storm outside? No, I'm asking, like, what do you do? I think it's not that safe to go driving because then you have to squeeze your uh, these knuckles to white to keep the steering wheel. But I don't know, maybe we will find some secure place. There has been lots of uh, trees that has fallen, so I think uh, it will be safe to park somewhere where there is no big trees or some old forest or swamp where trees would, could actually fall. But yeah, now driving just a short way to our place to boondock for next night and somewhere shelter. I'm kind of scared of the fallen trees. It doesn't happen that often, but when you have this tin box as your home, it's not like the most rock so solid one. So I don't know. I'm not afraid of thunderstorms or anything, but high winds are kind of scary. Yeah, I remember from uh, Greece actually there was a lots of high winds and we were parked uh, on the shores of Greece and so I was always afraid that our van will flip over. <laughs> yeah, because, because it shakes so much. Yes, but now we're gonna end up in a safe place for our van. Yeah. Just close drive from workplace. Yes, and if this is the last episode you can hear from us, then I guess we are Whew, dead both and the tree got us. Do you think it's wise to take a forest road? It's just the one bit. And then we are in the safe zone. And we have the electrical saw with us, so if the, any tree falls on the tr road, we can actually cut it pretty easily. Yes. That was one of the reasons why we bought the saw. First gear and let's go up. Uh, our van is such a man monster. It can drive like this. Heavy duty roads. We love it. Even everything is packed to the fullest. So it's three and a half ton that our van weights. Ta-da! So, yes, but because it's a diesel, it has really much torque. So, easy to drive also on off-road and high hills and over the rocks and everything. It started raining! So maybe just a short little walk and then go warm inside of the car. Not my favorite day. Perfect time to set up a tiny little wood stove. I love the heat that this wood stove gives. It's so warm and dry. And I especially love this little window that it has because we can admire the flame. I have this gun that I'm going to use. Can you see the flame there inside? Draft is really good now because it's high winds outside so the wood is immediately burned and you can hear it the roar and flames are there like in hell. So it's beautiful. <laughs> and Dino is indeed in his wood, I don't know. He just needs little time because he's so old and he doesn't have that much uh, teeth left. So it's kind of struggle for him. He just takes those tiny little bits with his tiny little teeth. So in a days like this, our solar panel is useless, basically. We can get something around 20 or 30 watts maybe, 
10% of the maximum wattage streaming is on the solar panel. So we decided to do something about it because the winter and autumn are coming and the only way we are charging the batteries during the winter time is by driving. And yeah, this uh, factory made vans they don't charge the batteries so fast. Maybe maximum of 18 amps and average is something around 12 to none. <laughs> yeah, and the, new, the newer the van, the less the charge because there's a smart alternator that is always trying to put down the voltage because then we can save some energy. Uh, but yeah, we found a solution. We have been actually searching for battery battery charger for a long, long time, and we finally found it. It's Sterling Power BB12 to 60 amps. So basically, it's just a voltage regulator between the car battery and the house battery, and there is a some good features on that thing also. It basically tells the alternator that the driving battery is still not full. Because when the driving drive battery is full, the alternator goes to idle mode and it doesn't give power out. So it has really good features inside the charger. I'm installing new charger for our van. 60 amp charger. And that's why we need thick cables. Because we want much more charging while we're driving. Now we get 18 amps and after this we get 60 amps. So three times or three and a half times more. That's really important because winter in Finland, no sun, no solar, just charging phone from alternator. Thick cable, so no voltage drop at all. Actually, one percent maximum. When you have high currents, you have pick pick fuses. Yeah, one hundred amps fuse for this cable and for our installation. Yes. It's going smoothly, we got the wiring underneath the floor, so it's nicely installed. We don't have to worry about looking ugly, we want to look it pretty, so we did it that way. Yeah, I'm really pleased, maybe 45 minutes still working with the wires and then we are done and can go to wild camp somewhere where is no electricity because we get, can get a lot of electricity from our normal driving battery. So this is battery the battery charger that charges while you're driving. Install is over. Yes, it's some beeps and bobs that we have to do but we have the battery the battery charger installed here. It's, it's here just laying around so I can see. But now we actually charge our batteries to full in 10 minutes time. I don't know how full they were before, but it was fast. Yes. Pretty really awesome. And one bonus thing about that charger is that it's also compatible with the lithium batteries. Everything works great. Just have to put everything to its place and it's there. And clean the mess. Yes. And that noise, we are in a harbor, so they are moving those containers around here, so it's a bit noisy. Inverter and cord from the right side, everything looks great here, perfect. And we will learn if the charger helps us with the battery situation. Whee! Look at my time go! It says yes to the electricity.
gold charger wires were 6 square millimeters and now we have 35 so these t really thick cables that they use with when they install high power base system to the vans and cars but now we have that thick fire to charge our batteries and we are very pleased and we will continue to updating you about how it works but from now what we have experienced just driving a couple of kilometers away from our workplace it has been doing great job i know let's see 12.7 so basically almost full battery it was something around 260 euros with the postage from uk so basically nothing if we can keep living here off grid because of that th little thing and heavy thing yes we are pretty cheap skates but we don't care when we put money on this rig because we love our house to death and we are dreaming of lithium batteries also i know they are super expensive but hopefully eventually we will get those too and that will be a, such a game changer but let's go to another subject. I'm really hungry. I have a pot here. I'm going to make a chickpeas and tomato sauce and maybe pasta. Are you how hungry? Yeah. But it's cheap food, it's healthy food and it's easy food. So I just make a small portion. And look, the fire is roaring there. So our pipe is pretty high. Our chimney is pretty high. So it gets really good craft even it doesn't wind, but when it blows like this, it's like whoo, roaring there from the very first. Really good English day today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. But yes, let's make storm food. Oh yeah, there is over 100,000 people who are living without electricity. Not by choice at the moment because of the storm situation but we don't care we have our batteries and we have our fire stove there and we cook our food with the gas and we can cook some meals in this uh, stove also it's kind of small but we can fit there a tiny little kettle also so days like these the whole off grid thing really pays off we don't have a worry in the world Good feeling when you are self-sufficient. I like it. Compact kitchen in a storm. What we are making is tomato sauce, chickpeas, lentils, rice. I love the tomato so sauce smell. It just makes everything really messy. A window just popped open. I'm kind of scared that it will fly away because those plastic windows are so expensive. But yes, this will be gross looking but really delicious rainy day food. Put in my pants on. getting dark so the little night walk and it actually stopped it raining so this is useless a house is there these days are getting shorter and shorter and we are losing the daylight each day more quickly this is just a dirt road nothing particular 
and Dino is walking a little bit slower, but that's okay too. The weather is so grey. Grey clouds and grey everything. I think we are getting snow soon. It will get colder and colder each day, so it will be fun if it's like really frisky and cold. But if it's going to be really wet winter, it's no fun at all. I already hate it. Okay, we will let the little duckies. This is an old dumpster place, so landfill. And now this is this grass area because nature has taken over it. And this is one of our favorite spots to spend overnight in the top of the old grass. But this is really close to Johnny's workplace and we can be here all private, so it's all naturey. It's so beautiful. Woo! It's getting late, so we are going to go chill in a van and maybe prepare a night snack. And maybe I watch a movie <laughs> again. <laughs> Story of our van life. Every day the routine. But what do you do when it's cold and you cannot see shit from the windows because it's getting dark so what is best thing if you are not dead it's been almost dead so being in sleep okay. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> 